minutes to join the call. But otherwise, welcome to the Ghana Agriculture Transformation Journey webinar. As we wait for our participants to join in who are coming in in good numbers, we should be able to start in a couple of minutes. So we'll give it about two minutes. Uh, Nimu, if you're able to play any of our videos, our introductory videos, as we wait for this one minute, that will be good. We're already on 65 plus and counting. So by the end of that one or two minute video, we should be good to start. For the participants that are joining us online, this is the Ghana Agriculture Transformation Journey webinar hosted by the Ghana Agra office. We will be starting in a short while. Uh, but for now, please make yourself comfortable. Uh, the agenda will be shared shortly. We will be speaking with our partners on Agra's contribution to Ghana's agriculture transformation agenda. We're excited to meet all of you. If you are already online, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat room. Tell us who you are, where you're joining from you know, how you've been working with us. I already see Hadiza Yaro has already posted. Welcome to the webinar, Hadiza. As we wait for all the others to introduce themselves in the chat, I am Agi Asimwe Konde, who will be your moderator for today. And, and I also work at Agra. Welcome Karibuni and make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Now, System Shabe from Uganda, you're welcome. I'm from Uganda myself. I guess that's why I'm excited with the country, but I can still see a couple of our partners coming in. We're excited to joy to see you here. Dr. Takemo, welcome. Please keep posting. We have another 30 seconds and we should be ready to start. Okay. Daniel from Nairobi, you're welcome. Rashidi from Ghana, you're welcome. I see members also coming in from the UK, you're all welcome. And I think we should be starting in a bit. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Agia Simwe Konde. I will be the moderator of this session today. I am the Vice President for Program Innovation and Delivery at AGRA, Alliance for Green Revolution, and we are honored to have you all 
here today. We will be joined, I think, later today by the Honorable Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Ausu Afriye Okoto, our Agra President, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, the West African Regional Head, Mr. Foster Boteng, the Directors of Ministry of Food for Agriculture present here today, our development partners that have taken the time to join us this afternoon, our implementing partners without whom we would never have been able to register the success so far, our colleagues that have joined us from all across the agro countries, our employees that are in Ghana that are doing a phenomenal job implementing this work, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar which has been themed the Ghana Agricultural Transformation Journey, a time with our partners on assessing our contribution to the agricultural transformation agenda in Ghana. Our agenda today is quite heavy, so we will be trying to manage time uh, as, as, as most as we can. So for purposes of guidance, I encourage our participants online to please uh, post your comments in the chat we will be looking at the chat very actively to ensure that all your comments and questions are addressed, but we will try and stick to the chat room for questions and less time allows, we will then open up a Q&A uh, somewhere at the tail end. Uh, but the way we've structured the webinar today, we will be looking at four thematic areas of focus, which broadly define the strategy that we've been implementing in Ghana over the last five years. And uh, I, to, to tell us more in detail on why we are here today, allow me to introduce and welcome our, our regional head who also started out as, as our country manager in Ghana, Mr. Foster Boteng, welcome to the floor and over to you. Good, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, good afternoon, uh, my vice president, Aggie. And, um, the Honorable Minister, uh, our development partners and directors of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and colleagues from Agra. Today, I'm just here to give uh, an account of our stewardship over the period that Agra has been working in Ghana. First of all, let me say that um, today is a day of reckoning to really tell our partners what we have been able to do. But before then, I will share with you a quick story about an old man, uh, the wisest old man in a village, that two young men went to him. And the two young men carried with them uh, a bird and put it under their armpit and told the old man, we are going to trick this old man to find out whether this bird is dead or alive. So they went to the old man and said, old man, tell us, is this bird alive or dead? The old man said, if I say he's dead, this young man will let the bird fly and disgrace me. If I say the bird is alive, they'll kill it. So he told them, the answers are in your hands. So today, I'm here to tell our partners what the investments we have done, but the results are in your hands. You have to tell the whole world whether we have been able to achieve what we set ourselves to do. So without much ado, let me say that our journey started in 2007 in Ghana. And uh, from 2007 to 2016, we invested close to $60 million in Ghana. And our focus was on research capacity building, where we're supporting a number of uh, African research and breeders to breed high quality and high variety, high yielding varieties to support our farmers to improve productivity. In Ghana alone, we supported about 18 PhD programs and 35 uh, MSc programs in plant breeding and also agronomy, crop and soil sciences. Also, uh, we did a lot of work around uh, crop variety and release. I remember in Ghana, we did 46 varieties were released and 36 were commercialized. We supported input distribution in Ghana. We supported innovative, innovative finance. And then also we work around policy issues to create an enabling environment for private sector participation. I quite remember we supported things, uh, policies around Plants and Fertilizer Act and the National Fertilizer Policy. 
Now, we made some successes, but then there were some also challenges. A bit, uh, our investments were uh, piecemeal. It was not an integrated approach. So taking a step back, we realized that we needed integrated approach in driving inclusive agricultural transformation. What actually informed us was one, we realized that most of the farmers in Ghana were smallholder farmers, and then uh, their productivity were low. We also realized that they were inefficient and uncompetitive. And so there were a lot of challenges uh, confronting the agricultural sector in Ghana. We saw dysfunctional production and delivery systems. We also saw climate change effects on agriculture. And so we need to revise our notes and make new investments. We saw limited access of value chain actors to finance. And there were suboptimal policies that were preventing private sector to participate fully in the sector. Now, what did we do? At a time when we we're about to invest in 2017 with our new strategy and the second journey of the agricultural transformation, the government of Ghana at that time had come out with a laudable vision to really improve productivity and production of smallholder farmers. And it was dubbed in a program called Planting for Food and Jobs campaign. This Planting for Food and Jobs campaign was anchored on the National Agricultural Investment Plan. And so when Agra saw that, it resonated well with us. And we said, we need to align our resources to support the government. This program was going to look at improving productivity of smallholder farmers, access to markets, and also access to extension as well. And that was really aligned with our strategy for Ghana in trying to improve farmers' productivity and income. So our strategy was focused on touching about 600 lives, uh, 600,000 smallholder farmers uh, in, in, in directly within a period of five years and indirectly 1.2 million. So how did we align our investments? First of all, we thought that government should prioritize its agenda to be able to drive the transformation. So our focus was supporting government capacity to be able to plan, allocate resources, and also track uh, results from this investment. The last one was also to work with government to create an enabling environment that will leverage private sector investment into the sector. After that, we align our investment to help government address some of down, downstream deliveries. And the first one was trying to look at improving productivity of smallholder farmers, increasing their access to market, and then also to extension. So we did three big integrated program in Ghana. The first one was around the maize soya consortium. Consortium is our model for last, last mile delivery to support smallholder farmers. We invested close to $2.5 million in this consortium, touching lives of about 143,000 farmers. The idea here is to link the farmers to input dealers, extension, and to market. This is our integrated approach to transform the lives of these smallholder farmers. Second, we also invested in the rice consortium because we thought that government wanted to be self-sufficient in rice production within a period of five years. The planting for food on jobs gave itself within the first three years achieved 30% in self-sufficiency in rice. So we supported government in this area to develop this flagship and develop this consortia to support a number of farmers. We targeted 110,000 farmers and we made the investment close to 2.3 million euros. It touched on providing input for farmers, market access, and then also extension. The last one we also invested in was cassava. Cassava was becoming an industrial crop and it was part of the government vision to expand this crop. We supported investment around $1.2 million to crowd in about close to about 123,000 farmers so that they can be aligned to a processor. They will get access to input, they get access to extension and market as well. Apart from that, we also work around policy issues. What actually come to mind immediately is supporting government to really look at the seed regulation. We also supported in looking at the aflatoxin uh, control regulation. We also looked at um, uh, extension, extension, no, not extension. We looked at uh, agricultural insurance, excuse me, agricultural insurance, and then a, a lot more of uh, uh, policy areas that we supported Ghana government to improve. I tell you the results are there to be told, and I'm not the person to tell the story. I'm sure our partners are here, 
they have worked with us and all this while, they are the best people to tell the story. Now, if we have done a great job, they have the answers. On this note, I welcome you all to this important journey that we are embarking on. Thank you. much uh poster for for those very very a uh, very good summary of uh, our strategy in ghana uh really said in in just five minutes and i think to take the conversation even further um agra was cognizant of the fact that our resources alone would not suffice to solve for the hunger problem on the continent and therefore our approach has been to crowd in others to collaborate with others to build synergies that would then be able to multiply and create the have the resources that would then solve for this solution. So to discuss where the rubber meets the road, and really we were doing all of this for the benefit of the farmer. And I have had the opportunity of speaking to a couple of farmers in Ghana to try and understand what does this all mean for them. And in unison, they all were speaking one language. If I am able to put food on the table for my family, if I am able to have excess income that can then speak to the basic needs of my family, and this is you know, taking my children to school, providing for basic health facilities, being able to live in a, in a, you know, a, a reasonable shelter, that for me as a farmer, was this was the success that they defined so we will be moving into the panel discussions and allow me to introduce to or welcome regina richardson who will be moderating the first session she will introduce her panel and we will wait to hear from our engagement of the last mile why was this important to reach the farmer and how has this resonated with the smallholder farmers that we all care about so much over to you, Regina. For those opening remarks, Aggie. And so to kick off the panel discussion for today, we are going to be hearing from the main constituents of all agri interventions with the support of the various partners on the panel today and listeners such as yourselves. And the main constituents of agri interventions include the smallholder farmer, the community-based advisor, the youth agripreneur, as, as well as last mile delivery structures like retail agribusiness in the various intervention areas. So Agra is a farmer-centered, African-led, part partnership-driven institution that is transforming Africa's smallholder farming from a solitary struggle to survive to businesses that thrive. Agra invests in Africa's family farmers millions of hardworking men and women, typically farming on less than a, a hectare of land. Agra's overall goal is to catalyze and sustain an inclusive agricultural transformation to increase incomes and improve food security for 1.2 million households, specifically in Ghana. And to achieve this, Agra works with partners to strengthen last mile delivery systems and enhance the capacities of smallholder farmers to access and utilize improved technologies. And we are looking at seeds, integrated soil fertility management, and crop protection projects at the last mile. Agra also works with partners to increase yields and production, enhance the quality of grains produced by smallholder farmers to enable the farmers attract premium prices and structured markets, thereby increasing smallholder farmers' income. So our network for last mile delivery include community-based advisors, youth agripreneurs, retail agro-dealers, and they are supported by a number of organizations in collaboration with AGRA, such as the Directorate of Agri Extension Services of MOFA, the Hunger Project Catholic Relief Services, Farmer Line, Sahel Greens, Nestle, and the African Fertilizer and Agribusinesses Partnership, among other organizations. We are going to be hearing from two CBAs who are nominees, Janet Sakwadi and Jalilu, and a youth agripreneur who is Kande Malik. And then we'll wrap up this session by listening to a retail agro dealer. And all the nominees are going to be sharing with us the activities that they have engaged in and continue to engage in to support farming families in their districts and communities. 
And they're also going to be telling us about any early impacts that they have seen and suggestions um, for interventions going forward. So I would like to pause here and give the opportunity for us to listen to our last mile and major constituents for interventions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. who's, who's supposed to come online now? It's Ben. Uh, I'm not so sure. Regina, uh, who, who's coming on? Mm -hmm. Is it the video? Or are we uh, going to, to be hearing video. from the CBAs? Yes, um, Ben is just getting ready to play the video. Okay, great. Okay, so... Uh, our audience, please bear with us. Um, just in case of some technical hitches, we, we should have had live audiences. But as you know, our farms are usually in rural places. Connectivity is not that great. Uh, so I think we have a plan B, just in case uh, plan A doesn't work. Uh, but Regina, your time. I was trained and aggressive as a CB. After my being trained as a CBA, I established a mother demo to train farmers on the use of hybrid The volume needs to be up. Proper application of fertilizers to improve yields. I also assisted to distribute seeds and fertilizers to farmers for establishing of baby demos to learn new agro-agenics from the Shadaso community in Inkwanga South, Bulu East region. I was trained and aggressive as a CBA. After my being trained as a CBA, I established a mother demo to train farmers on the use of hybrid seeds, correct spacing, pr proper application of fertilizers to improve yields. I also assisted to distribute seeds and fertilizers to farmers for establishing of baby demos to learn new agronomic practices. As a result of my work as a CDA, some of the farmers in my community are getting high yields from their farm, from their farms. Example, one female farmer testified that her yields, her farm yields has been increased from seven bags to 21 bags per acre because she's now using the new hybrid seeds with good agronomic practices. So we thank Agra so much for the support to improve on our farm practices. Regina, if the volume can be increased, that would be uh, helpful. Uh, the volume is still low for our audience. You agree, we've taken notes, thank you. My name is Mohamed Abdel Jalil. I'm from Kofosi, that's Solatuna Kalba district. That was last 2019, I was elected as a CBA. So I was called to come to Sola for a workshop. We went there under Agric. So they train us, they train us how farmers to use mother demo and the baby demo. So when they train us, the every day we came home and the next week, the next week they gave us the cowpea for us to do the baby demo and the mother demo. So I did my mother demo and the farmer also learned from my mother demo and they did their own in their farms. So they know how to dig and bury the fertilizer and roll them uh, to dig uh, to plant them in rows. So that very year, CRS also called us to come for a meeting in Damangu. So when they in the three nurse, 
select groups that's so so when we came, when we came home so i want to train the community for them to have to have groups so i'm having three groups already they have made their fair share out so the maximum was nine thousand five uh, nine thousand six hundred and um, the minimum was seven thousand so that that next year that's 2020 so they link us through the uh, people who supply us so we apply inputs that's chemicals and the uh, fertilizer so the, 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 the 2020 i was able to sell about 550 bucks mpk and the ammonia 30 bucks so that, that very year to CRS, uh, the program also provide uh, the Susu people uh, seed for them to farm. So, they, so one, one of the group was able to farm and they had five uh, bags of the 40 bulls. That's the kg. So at the same time, to, I'm now predicting on CRS to what? To, 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 what? to link us through the farm produce. How to buy them in what? In, at a high price. At the same time, I'm having another CBS around me, and I'm building on the program to so, so link us through the uh, listen, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the inputs, that's the chemicals and the what, the fertilizer. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. My name is Professor Nasi, I'm also in the agriculture. I'm from Bandi, the Sulawesi state of the Upper West region. Youth are influenced in partnership with Agra and Nestle to introduce Yakus. That is youth agri entrepreneurship development in the Southern Group, of which I am a beneficiary. I have benefited from data services such as plowing, uh, planting, and shelling, which has reduced my time and um, amount of money I have spent on the farm. That I have also benefited uh, from the program by uh, provision of quality inputs such as fertilizer, chemical, and also training on pre- and post-harvest losses. Through the program, I have been able to increase my number of acres, and, 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 and that I have been able to get high yields and sell, and I have been able to get enough money to put up a burden of which uh, I have started last year, which is almost at the completing stage. I recommend that people should be brought early and also farm mechanization such as the machines to also be increased in number to enable the work to move on faster for us. I thank uh, Nestle, Sahin Green, Agra and Yadis for initiating this program. Thank you very much. My name is Kenneth Banks, Managing Director of My Banks Limited. My Banks Limited is an agro company set up in Ghana in 4th October 2017. The main objective of the company is to develop a tailor-made product for our farmers to the last mile of our operational channels. The early stages of our operations as a company, My Banks Limited faced a lot of challenges. Some of them were access to finance, to help us operate into our capacity, access to markets in acquiring the goods for us to distribute to the last mile of our value chain, an understanding of our model which became a very great challenge to most of the big suppliers because they did not see why we should go into the hinterlands as an operational model. Under the SIPMA project, AFAB worked with my banks to help address some of the challenges at our early stages. Notably, through the organization of seminars, my banks were able to pick up the idea behind effective branding. Currently, my banks has been able to do its own branding with eight vegetable seeds, notably pepper and carrot. This branding has given us great access into the market where farmers, retailers, distributors are able to identify us through our branding. These are some of our products, our Kenyan pepper, 
which is fully branded with my band's logo at the back and the inscription of the products in front in association with planting for food and jobs as under the subsidy program for 2021. Another one is our carrots, which is fully noted and known in the market. Through the Sigma project, with the help of AFA, my bus limited was introduced to several financial houses such as Injaro, APSA, Ecobank, ADB, and CBJ. With the help of AFA, we've been able to raise over 700,000 from CBJ to help execute our contracts under the planting for food for 2021 season. Through the SIPMA project, AFA introduced my bands to a number of suppliers, AMG, Demeter, Intercontinental, Ominifet, and all these companies came to our aid. From our input supply in our first year of 20,000 bucks, in our second year, we were able to do a supply of 50,000 bucks, and in our third year, we did a supply of 156,000 bucks. This year, we have a projection over 360,000 bucks to help us get into the last mile of our supply chain. Building our capacity as a company, we currently are in talks with OCP in importation of our own products into the country. We have also are in discussion with foreign investors who have agreed to give us 3 million USD for our activities for the next five years. And we are also in rollout in establishing our satellite warehouses across our three regional operations. It's our fervent prayer that our relationship with AFA will grow to become stronger and stronger. Thank you. Regina, you are on mute. Thank you so much for those videos. So Agra, together with implementing partners, worked together at the last mile to strengthen the capacity of the actors that we have just watched on these various videos in, to enable them to work with many more smallholders, averaging 300 farmers, in some cases 500 farmers, um, to support them with technical knowledge on uh, good agronomic practices, post-harvest handling, as well as linking them actively to the private sector partners for access to inputs and other technologies. So essentially, they are also a major part, an important part of the agricultural transformation journey. So I'd like to hand over to you now, Aggie. Thank you all so much for your audience. Thank you very much, Jane, and thank you for uh, being a resilient panelist. I think you, you anticipated that you might get a shock uh, in connectivity and you had a good plan B, which actually came in handy. Well done with that. Um, but, you know, our audience, uh, three things really came out very clearly for me. Uh, I noticed that most of the speakers were youthful, that they were digitally savvy, but they were empowered with basic knowledge or information on inputs, access to markets and, and finance, which has transformed them in a way. So uh, as you can see, this is the reason why I think in our last mile delivery model, Ebo, would you like to mute please? Thank you. You know, we noticed that this is a system that needs to be functional if our smallholder farmers are to indeed uh, access the right inputs on time, but also be able to access markets and then be able to earn, uh, have increased, livelihood, increased income and better livelihood. But to really delve deeper into the conversation on why private sector and who did we work with to ensure that this is anchored in the private sector realm 
which really is more sustainable and, and resilient, is our very own Anthony Ngosi, who will be facilitating the next session. So welcome Anthony Ngosi to this uh, webinar and please take it away. Thank you, uh, VP. A very warm welcome to this session where our panelists from uh, the private sector, the NGO and research institutions that have been partnering with AGRA uh, in developing the country's uh, market systems will briefly share the highlights of their experiences. The insights of these partners are particularly important because these panelists uh, have been serving as our technical partners in the execution of our strategy. From this panel, we hope to learn, learn from and learn about the approaches that our, our implementing partners have been executing in the context of pursuing uh, the transformation of the agricultural sector in Ghana. So with me this afternoon is Mr. Fati Ennis, who is the head of Agricultural Services at Nestle, Central and, um, Central and West Africa region. And Nestle actually co-invested co with Agra to upgrade their local maize value chain supply. And they also uh, worked with us to open up agribusiness opportunities for the rural youth. I also have with us uh, our second panelist who is uh, Mr. Ebo Graham, who is project manager at uh, Hopeline Institute. And they have been facilitating value chain development and access to finance in the rice value chain that we heard about earlier on. Uh, thirdly, we have Dr. Rose Omari, who is a senior research scientist at STEPRI, a research institute that works with AGRA on aflatoxin policy and regulation. And fourthly, our fourth panel panelist will be uh, Professor Eric Dankwa, who is the founding director of the West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, WAKI, at the Institute of Ghana in Legon. So with these partners, uh, I'll just go straight away and ask uh, that uh, with no, no, without any further ado, we can go straight into uh, the discussions where our first panelist, uh, Mr. Fatih Ennis, uh, please go ahead and share your remarks in the next four, four minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Honorable Minister of Food and Agriculture, Ghana, uh, distinguished panelists from MOFA, Agra, USAID, and universities, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Despite the enormous potential for the youth in agriculture, the sector is heavily dependent on the aged farmer, terribly threatening the sustainability of the sector. The average age of farmer in Ghana is 55 years, whereas life expectancy in Ghana averages between 55 to 60 years old. Youth participation in agriculture sector is very low due to many constraints. Next vision is to provide accessible and affordable nutrition for all. To achieve that, increasing local sourcing from Ghana is one of the Nestle key objectives. Increasing local sourcing is also in line with our creating shared value approach. On the community side, it's a way of investing significant resources in local farmers, SMEs, and economy. With about situation, Nestle Ghana used to face quality challenges on local grains, particularly on maize, due to the high level of mycotoxin contamination which was a threat in front of maximizing local sourcing objective. This was due to low level of education on pre and post harvest practices, as well as low supplier technical capacities. Nestle and Agra entered into a partnership to catalyze the sustainable development of farmer livelihoods and youth opportunities in farming ecosystem and agri-food value chains across Africa. Starting with the youth agropreneurship development initiatives in Ghana, our goal is attracting graduated agropreneurs, continue to supply Nestle with high quality of raw material while successfully leading their farm in a continuously changing business environment. 
They are natural leaders, inspiring fellow farmers to copy with pride and develop their own farms to become supplier of Nestle. To achieve this goal, we are working with Sahel Grains in the implementation of Youth Agripreneurship Development Program in northern part of Ghana. Thanks to Agra and Sahel and our partners, our intervention, we built the capacity of 386 youth agripreneurs through training in crop agronomy, entrepreneurship mindset, and leadership skills need to run a business operation. Additionally, 36 youth of farmers coach and mentor to establish an outgrower. We also provided the input supply, like a seed, fertilizer, and mechanization services to the old youth who is part of our project. We also provided them with the precious technical know-how and hand-holding that give to the local farmer and SMEs to become world-class supplier. So if you look at the high-level impacts of our intervention with the, those youth farmers in Ghana, the yield, average yield, not the specific individual farmers, Overall, our uh, participating youth agripreneurs, their yield is increased 12%, while the income is increased 27%. Maize quality, which is very key for Nestle, is improved from 27% to 80% at the consignment level, which in our Nestle factory, when we are testing the grains with the highest quality standard, with the highest quality norms. Thank you to Honorable Minister and the MOFA directors for their continuous support and with help of the YADIS program, Nestle Ghana, I am honored to say that 100% locally sourcing maize in year of 2021. So Sahel Grains in Ghana started exporting the maize to the UK, which passed the all consignment assessment. That's the, where we see the uh, entire capacity improvement of. Nestle also delivered long-term contract and financial support to Sahel Grain for new investment on millet which creates new opportunity for youth agripreneurs in Ghana. I am seeing very high level positive impact from the project, what we are doing together with Agra. So this project needs to be scaled up to increase number of youth agripreneurs and suppliers. Investment on youth agripreneurs and SMEs will support agricultural transformation journey in Ghana. My recommendation for Agra's 2030 strategy will be to continue the implementation of regenerative agricultural practices. So Ghanaian youth agripreneurs will play crucial role on the Ghana agricultural transformation journey. If we coach them on entrepreneurial mindset and guide them on regenerative agriculture implementation, that will be the most sustainable way. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fatih. I was just within time. Thank you indeed. Uh, we'll now quickly go uh, to Mr. Abel Graham. Abel, please take it away. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. you can, can you see me? Yes. All right. Good, good afternoon. Uh, Honorable Minister of Food and Agriculture, Ghana, my colleagues and fellow panelists, the head of Agra West Africa, and the AGRA team. Hopeline Institute was part of the Ghana Rice Consortium and our role was simple and clear. We are complementing the efforts of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in extension delivery. What we have been able to do as a consortium was to identify the gaps in the rice market area and also, hello? Yes, hello. okay now. It, there was an echo, but that's fine now. Continue, please. All right. Uh, Ebo, you've lost your audio. We can't hear you. Okay, uh, I'll suggest- Can you hear me? Yes, okay, you're back. Okay, all right. Please go. So we develop a market-led approach that helped us to identify the gaps and how to also solve them. So through advocacy partnerships, we we're able to come up with a strategy, the, Ghana Eat, the Eat Ghana Rice campaign. 
that brought about hello it's not echoing that brought about the needed impetus and the government support that we needed this we brought together the importance of rice and local millers rice farmers to a round table to steer the path for uh, the achievements that we have so far we were able to increase with the support of the stakeholders from 2017 till now rice products production went from 665,000 metric tons in in 2016 to 960,000 metric tons in 2020 we were able to increase the yield from 1.7 metric ton per hectare to 3.5 as of 2020. We've also been able to leverage investments in the area of rice milling and marketing. Some of the investments came from government side, giving tax exemptions to those investing in the rice sector and also in private investments in setting up of rice mills. When we, the project started, we had seven well-class mills. Now we have 21 with an investment of over $52 million in CAPEX and working capital for these rice millers. Government was also able to give up a reforming fund for rice millers to tap in, in averaging 20 million US dollars to rice farmers. We were also able to strike deals for rice millers for sustainability to the Ghana rice buffer, the Ghana buffer stock, which contracts were given to major rice players who we use them as an anchors to be able to work with the farmers for sustainability. Through that, Four major rice importers were able to launch their rice brands in Ghana. Olam, Sokresa, Welma, and Dijon. These are major rice importers. And we also complement the government for also instituting a 30% local content to all rice importers. So if you want to import rice, look into the country for 30% before you look out for the rest of your import. We were also able to leverage support from the Ministry of Local Government in the area of mechanization, where some of the district assemblies use their district assembly common fund to set up mechanization centers. One of it is at in Obum, the Jabin district, where they got the support. This led to government's intervention in providing irrigation and expanding some of the irrigation dams in the various communities to support the rice production. One of it is what is being done by SAPIP at the Butanga Irrigation Scheme. Okay, also, can you wind up, please? Uh, yes, don't... as I wind up, two of our major rice Producers, MM Awal, got the contract to supply the West Africa uh, uh, ECOWAS buffer stock of $30 million of rice. So these are the things that we want to complement Agra, Agra for doing in the investment in the rice sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Abel Graham, for, that, uh, for those remarks. Uh, we'll now quickly go on to our next presenter, who is Dr. Uh, Rose Omari from Step 3. Yeah, thank you very much. Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, distinguished panelists and uh, participants, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to contribute to this discussion. We were supported by AGRA through a grant to develop a national policy and technical regulation 
paflatoxin control. And uh, by this, we are trying to address two major problems. The first one is a low awareness of po uh, policymakers and value chain access about aflatoxin and their effects on health, on the economy, and food security. The second problem was to address the weak collaboration among various stakeholders in addressing aflatoxin problems. We realized that the lack of collaboration often leads to inefficiencies in resource utilization and insignificant impacts. So we thought that by having a national policy in place, we will be able to harness the collective skills and strengths of all the various stakeholders for efficient management of aflatoxins in Ghana. And this policy is also meant to outline what we should be doing as a country to effectively manage aflatoxins in food and feed. So as part of the policy development process, we conducted, the, we conducted a situational analysis to identify the key issues that the policy should focus on. We then established the National Steering Committee for Aflatoxin Control. And this committee is constituted by seven institutions at the moment, from public, private, NGOs, and even the parliament is a member of, a, of this committee. And the committee has worked hard to ensure that we have the draft policy that we have now. We also did extensive stakeholder consultations and engagement with farmers, with uh, various access traders, formal and informal processes, NGOs, public sectors, several ministries were involved as well as their agencies and also development partners were also engaged. So we, had, we also had high level engagement with the Minister of Food and Agriculture, Minister of Trade and Industry, Minister of Health, and Minister of Environment, Science and Technology to seek their endorsement of the policy and the technical regulation. And I can say that they all endorsed the policy and gave us their support. So as a result of all these uh, stakeholder engagement, we realized that there has been heightened awareness and interest of stakeholders in aflatoxin issues. We keep on getting institutions reaching out to us for collaboration the media interest is so high, they are willing to report on aflatoxin issues. And we now have a technical regulation that has been enacted by parliament in December last year. And this technical regulation outlines the do's and the don'ts that will ensure that we produce and market aflatoxin safe products. And we have four ministries, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Trade and Industry, Ministry of Health and Environment, and science and technology who have endorsed the policy and have prepared a joint cabinet memo to submit the policy to cabinet for approval. We are at that stage now, the policy is knocking at the door of, uh, of the cabinet. We are hoping that by 4th July of this year, when this project is officially ending, we would have had this policy approved by Ghana's cabinet. So some of the key lessons we learned quite implementing this project is that high level consultation and advocacy are important for government buying and for government to put in investment in any policy that is developed. We also realize that stakeholder engagement is important for their increased commitment and interest. Dissemination of output is also key to create awareness. We really generated a lot of knowledge products that we disseminated. And media involvement throughout the process, just as we derived from the beginning, we were working with the media. And then finally, I would say that policy development is a complex process that requires adequate time and consult for consultation. And it is even more complicated when two or more ministries need to own the different aspects of that policy, just as we have for this aflatoxin policy. And the process can also be interrupted by political activities, elections of new government, and so on and so forth. So going forward, we will suggest to AGRA to take 
into consideration all these things when they are awarding any grant or any policy related grant in future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you indeed, Dr. Omari, for those remarks. Very useful indeed. And we'll quickly go on to the next speaker before we have a wrap up. The next speaker is uh, Professor Eric Dankwa. Professor Dankwa, over to you. Yeah. Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Owusu Afri Akoto, President of Agra, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Ghana's ability to feed itself at reasonable cost and become a major food supplier for the world will not be challenged if we significantly transform our agriculture. Thanks to the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, the government of Ghana and our development partners, WACI is today one of the notable institutions in the plant breeding training and research space in Africa WACI was established at the behest of AGRA in 2007. We have a proud global record of having trained 95 PhDs in the past decade. AGRA fully funded 52 of our graduates, out of which 12 are Ghanaians. In total, WACI has trained 21 Ghanaian PhDs who are currently leading plant breeding programs in eight institutions in the country. They have attracted over $6 million for donor projects, published 72 papers from their research in high impact journals and released over 40 improved varieties of staple crops, many of which are being commercialized. Our alumni, including Dr. Maxwell Asante, a notable rice breeder in Africa, will have been lost to the diaspora if Waki had not been established. This gives credence to our philosophy that training African scientists in Africa for Africa is a smart development investment. Um, Waki itself is in the forefront of delivering innovations which are getting to farmers through public-private partnerships. Our high-yielding maize hybrids, yielding 9 to 11 tons per hectare, developed with support from Agra, is testament to our prominence in the maize improvement space in the country. Through our leadership of the Ghana Early Generation Seed Consortium for Sustainable Production of Quality Seeds, we are partner partnering with the Crops Research Institute the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute, the Integrated Water and Agricultural Development Ghana Limited, and the Legacy Crop Improvement Center to deliver 115 metric tons of foundation seeds of maize, cowpea, soybean, and granules to the Certified Seed Consortium led by the National Seed Trade Association of Ghana for the production of 6,000 metric tons of certified seed we should get to farmers by the major season of 2022, and I believe this will boost the Ghana Planting for Food and Jobs program. Let me hasten to add that we are also leading efforts at equipping farmers with the knowledge and skills that will allow them to run with innovation in their fields to boost their productivity. We believe our training programs would lead to increased adoption of improved varieties which would allow Ghana to walk towards food and nutrition security if we can sustainably scale up what we are doing with the private partners. WACI, the center which was founded 13 years ago, thanks to Agra, has become an African success story and can lead in efforts to transform agriculture in Ghana if the center is adopted and fully funded by Agra and the government of Ghana under the Agra 3.0 strategy as a regional hub for agricultural innovation. I dare say that funding strategic public-private partnerships for the development of the Ghana seed production systems is a smart development investment. And we commend the Ghana Inclusive Agricultural Transformation Program for the opportunity to lead the early generation seed consortium. 
We have even better innovations in the pipeline and we ask for more support to show that we are a truly excellent institution. And as we say in Agra, let me seize this moment to appeal to the government of Ghana to do more for impact driven research, for we cannot transform our agriculture without innovation. We need to build resilient and robust food systems underpinned by self-reliance. In closing, um, Mr. Chair, let me reiterate that the promise I raised in the opening statement could be turned into reality if we would prioritize agriculture. We have to think beyond Malabo, cross the benchmarks to demonstrate that we truly envision a Ghana without aid. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. And thank you to all the participants uh, for the remarks. I think what is coming out very clearly uh, from the first, uh, we, from uh, Hati, from Nestle, we heard how backward integration is happening and investment is going even towards uh, servicing, providing services to smallholder farmers, including extension, uh, mechanization and access to, to inputs because of the partnerships that we have developed. We, we also heard about the uh, aflo aflatoxin management, which has been very, very important uh, here in Ghana in improving the quality of maize. And then uh, going on to Hopeline, we heard about the importance of uh, marketing of, of local rice. I think there was a big gap there. And that was a gap that was addressed uh, pretty well. Uh, there was also a policy on uh, local, local sourcing that encouraged or required 30% of local uh, rice that boosted a lot, uh, the, that contributing to the, the, contributed to the boosting of production. We heard about the increased production and productivity levels, which were shared there, and we are recording all this. And uh, Stepri, we also heard about the efforts in the aflatoxin uh, control and awareness how it is important to have a private and public uh, partnership dialogue. Uh, they use the National Steering Committee uh, to, to do that. And also uh, they gave us very good approaches on, on working with the media uh, to increase awareness of uh, aflatoxin in Ghana. And closing was our fourth panelist from Waki. And he underlined the importance of human capacity building uh, in, in system development, and also carrying forward the innovations from uh, the research to the farmers through partnerships with the public, uh, private sector. And linkages with flagships, like, like the, the planting for food and jobs has been very good at uh, uh, scaling such, such innovations. So with that, I would like to hand over, hand back uh, to VP Aggie. Thanks very much, over to you. Thank you, Anthony. And thank you for moderating a very engaging and interesting panel. I, I was quite uh, intrigued by all the insights that came through, uh, but as I introduce the next panel, I would like to, to challenge all our panelists to think through how can you scale what we have seeded, I mean, what we did was a seed. We planted a seed uh, in these institutions and in these organizations. How can you multiply that to be able to solve for the agricultural problem that we have uh, in Ghana and also in the continent? And very specific to Professor Eric, uh, Danku, if you could probably put in the chat for everybody. While we built this human scientific capacity in Ghana and on the continent, how do those PhD numbers compare to some of the agriculture giants on the continent? How do the numbers of PhDs that we have compare? And I do raise this point very specific because the literature we have read demonstrate that for any industry to leapfrog and lead in its sector, it must have the human skills and capacity that supersede any other competitor. So please do share those numbers in the chat as we go along. And on this note, allow me to introduce our very own James Kiplimo, who is from uh, Development Corporation. As you all know, we cannot do this without resources. And we have been honored to have a partnership 
that has made all of this happen and probably will continue to make this happen. So over to you, James Kiplimo, please take it away. Thank you very much, um, um, Aggie, um, for this opportunity. Um, Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, Ghana, uh, President, uh, Development Partners, Implementing Partners, and the larger community of stakeholders, may I welcome you to this session. Uh, this session especially is focused around reflecting on the contribution of the Partnership for Inclusive Agriculture Transformation, um, PIATA, to Ghana's ag transformation journey. As a way of introduction, um, PIATA is a unique strategic partnership launched in 2017 by various development partners um, that aims to leverage the full complement of tools, systems, knowledge, and resources of partners towards a common goal of catalyzing and sustaining an inclusive agriculture transformation in the continent to increase incomes, but also to improve food security among millions of smallholder farmers in 11 uh, priority countries, including Ghana. So towards actualizing the Piata aspirations, um, it was deemed necessary that we have um, Piata outfits at country level. We are calling them um, country advisory committees that were set up across 11 countries because we do recognize that this is where a lot of the pro work is being programmed. I'm glad to note that Ghana well, the, I can um, see. was a man Sorry, somebody speaking. We're glad that Ghana is among the first countries to have set up a, a country advisory committee um, that is now moving, moving things and driving a lot of processes. Um, and therefore, I want to want to thank you, thank the partners that have remained committed and continue to support to, to support and drive this uh, platform. And this session will be hearing from uh, the chair of this uh, country advisory committee, um, none other than Amber Lily Kenny. Lily is the USID Ghana team leader, as well as the global food security strategy country, country coordinator. And therefore it is my single owner and privilege to invite her to speak to us and to tell us more around the contribution the Piata Country Advisory Committee uh, in Ghana has made in terms of contributions towards Ghana's um, ag transformation journey. So help me welcome um, Lily Kenny to speak to us. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, James. And I am happy to be here and happy to be part of today's meeting with all of you. Um, as my role as the Country Advisory Committee Chair, I'd like to just take a moment to recognize some of the successes and contributions uh, that AGRA has done over the past couple of years here. So all protocols observed. Um, I will open up with just a little bit of information. We've talked a little bit about it already, but I wanted to orient ourselves on the ag sector in Ghana. So we know that the ag sector accounts for 20% of Ghana's GDP, and it actually employs almost 42% of the workforce in Ghana. And it's the main source of livelihood for most of the country's poorest households. It's very important. Without a doubt, the sector plays a leading role in feeding the population while providing income and employment along all of its value chains and subsystems. Despite the importance of agriculture to transform livelihoods, Ghana's agriculture sector is characterized by low yields for both staple and cash crops. About 80% of staple food crop production are from small land holdings, which is, ranges from half a hectare to two hectares. The smallholder farmers are largely uncompetitive, which we talked a little bit about that, and inefficient resulting in low productivity. Other challenges 
faced by the ag sector include poor delivery systems for improved technologies to farmers, limited access of value chain actors to finance, and suboptimal policy environment um, as well. So through AGRA, a number of donors and in partnership with AGRA are trying to change this through the Partnership for Inclusive Agriculture Transformation in Africa, or we refer to it as PIATA more often. This was launched in 2017 to transform agriculture systems by driving integrated develop delivery within our agroeconomic zones and across value chains, market systems to enhance in-country coordination and to deepen engagement with the private sector in the hopes and the aim to transition Ghanaian agriculture from subsistence to sub sustainable business occupations. The partners under Piata include BMGF, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, BMZ, Rockefeller, FCDO, and USA. So here I am. As you, oh, I think somebody needs to mute themselves. Maybe Regina can help us find the person who needs to be muted. Okay, thank you. And we all know that the implementing partner of Piata is Agra. So I just wanted to share some of the successes now of the investments of Piata in Ghana. So, so far, Agra has rolled out a total of 52 grants, and 44 of them are still active valued at almost 17 million US dollars. Um, they're in various stages of implementation. Um, and USAID, as well as KFW, has um, recently contributed more funds to Piata as well. So they've been able to expand their portfolio. For systems development, there's been quite a few gains. Um, we've committed, or Piata has committed 16.8 million US dollars um, to work on system development work. This has reached 1.6 million farmers. Um, this has resulted in over 40,000 metric tons of improved seeds of our focus crops produced by enterprises supported by AGRA. Um, then we've identified and trained over 5,500 village-based advisors um, to promote capacity building and training communities in smaller villages. And we've had over 215 million uh, US dollars of fo focus crops sold through structured markets. Piata is also all about partnerships. It's in the name, it is a partnership. So just to talk a little bit about partnerships under Piata, some of the successes there. Uh, Agra through Piata has leveraged over 160 million US dollars through public private partnerships. Um, there's been almost 100 new public private partnerships formed um, to drive specific aspects of the value chain of different value chains in Ghana, and 420 million US dollars of. Um, um, has been invested uh, in the government to leverage and strengthen agriculture and different value chains. So in conclusion, you can see Piata has leveraged a wide complement of tools, systems, knowledge, and resources of partners to catalyze inclusive agricultural transformation here in Ghana. We hope, we know, and we're seeing this is resulting in increased incomes and improve food security for millions of smallholder farm households. With AGRA as Piata's implementing partner, we look forward um, to com complementing existing national, regional, uh, and continental initiatives to deliver on the Malibu commitments uh, of, of um, the African Union and of the different countries. So with that overview, I'd like to say thank you and turn it back over to James for his um, continued facilitation of this panel. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. I think that was extremely clear around the essence of 
partnership. I think when we come together, I think um, we, we are likely to move the needle around agriculture transformation. So we really, really want to appreciate the, the partnership that is around the partnership for inclusive agriculture transformation. Um, and of course, and I know what I'm already seeing and hearing from you is also the fact that there's a lot of scope to still go, um, I mean, strengthen our efforts and, and, uh, and, and link up with other things that are happening within the continent. So great, great stuff. I think, um, um, I think it's just as I finalize, I just want to say the spirit of Ubuntu, you know, it says, I am because we are. And since we are, therefore I am. That is the essence of partnerships. And I'm not, I'm not seeing any question and uh, comment from the, from the chat. So I'm, I'm sure it is extremely clear. Um, there's a lot of room for us to, to work around this partnership and even grow it further. Thank you very much. Over to you, um, Agi Conde. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, well said. Uh, or is delighted to hear from yes. our partners. Um, if you could please uh, mute. Thank you. Thank you, James, uh, for, for moderating that session. And, and it was really humbling to hear the articulation um, of, of the success so far achieved, but also really the journey ahead. Uh, we are happy to, to hear the affirmation that this is a journey that we are in, in together and that we should be able to take to even another level. In the interest of time, uh, we are running a few minutes late, uh, but we should be able to catch up with the next panel. Uh, allow me to invite our very own Thierry Ngoga, who will be taking us through uh, the government uh, conversation on our state capability and policy formulation. As you all well articulated, we cannot do this without our leadership. We cannot do this without government. And like they say, if leadership at the top is aligned and commit committed, then the African journey for transformation is a reality. Welcome to Yeringonga and uh, please take it over. Thank you very much, Agi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, moving to government, a very important partner and also a very important actor in this process of agriculture transformation in Accra, or oh, sorry, in Ghana. Um, as you may have heard, uh, especially from Foster when he introduced, one of the agro thematic areas of work is really evolves around policy and state capability, which involves working with government to strengthen planning and delivery of various plans, agriculture plans that government have just put, put forward. And of course, another important part is actually how to enhance uh, accountability systems and mechanism and create enabling uh, environment to increase the public a private sector partnership, which uh, predecessors have really spoken about. So Agra has made a number of investment. Uh, I think Lily made a very good, uh, uh, very good summary of the number of grants that Agra has provided uh, in, in Ghana, but also Agra provide technical assistance in various ways. So in this way, we really want to understand uh, how government has really collaborated with Agra in passing policies, acts, regulations, uh, what is evolving in terms of, you know, biannual review, joint sector reviews. So we are really going to hear from panelists who have been involved uh, in this in this process. And um, for this panel, we have four panelists. Three of them are really uh, leading directors from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in Ghana, and we have a senior advisor. Uh, in, the, in the president's office. So with us on this panel, we have Mr. Set Osei Akoto, director in charge of crop services. We have Mr. Paul Siame, director of agriculture extension services. We have Mr. Richard Tumwasi Ankra, director of planning, policy planning, monitoring and evaluation. And we have Nana Serwa Amuako, Senior Technical Advisor on Agriculture in the Office of the President. Each panelist will have three minutes and we only have one lady. So allow me to start with Nana. Um, Nana, you've been spearheading this um, fertilizer expansion program from the President's office. 
it would be good just to hear from you in the three minutes. What is your goal? And what have you achieved so far? And very specifically, just, just tell us about your partnership with AGRA and the AGRA role uh, in this process. Over to you, Nana. Nana, are you with us? Uh, as we wait for Nana to come, um, if she's not with us yet, uh, I would like just to jump to Mr. Akoto, who's the Director of Crop Services. We've heard a lot about the Planting for Food and Job flagship. I want to hear from you, and it would be good just if you can share with our audience if there is really any evidence that shows that the flagship is or has led to the intended outcome. There were very specific outcomes the planting for food and jobs wanted to achieve. We want to hear from you, what are these outcomes that you would really want to share with the audience? Three minutes, Mr. Akoto, over to you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Koto. Okay. Um, Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, President of the AGRA and uh, distinguished uh, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. As you have known, my name is Seto Sakuto, and I'm just going to share with you about a, a program that you are familiar with and you have heard a lot about this afternoon. As you all know, under the leadership of the Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Usu Fria Kutu, we started implementing planting for food and jobs. Planting for food and jobs, basically, we are using improved seeds and fertilizers to change around the productivity of farmers and also to ensure increased income for farmers. At this input that you are giving to farmers is at a reduced cost. And then expected results include increased farm income, reduced cost of production, increased productivity, and then also to create jobs for the teen youth. Now, somebody may ask, what is the approach? The approach is basically provision of improved seeds and then fertilizers at reduced cost to farmers. And the crops that we are focused on are all crops that are, are needed for food security issues. And also they are the major staple foods for Ghanaian farmers. And this is what we are using. Then two, we are also providing quality extension so that farmers can have access to for, for, for technologies that they can use to increase productivity. And lastly, we are also using the private sector in the distribution of inputs, being fertilizers or seeds, so that at least farmers can have, and everywhere the farmer is, he should be able to assess the necessary inputs. You talk about evidence. Yes, we have some evidence to show. Currently, following the four years of successive implementation of planting for food and jobs, one can say that there's availability of food and leading to uh, lower prices of food in, this, in the country. Then also, we have also recorded profitability of smallholder rice farmers being increased from 10% in 2016 to 25% in 2019. And this is mainly due to enhanced access of farmers having the input that I've talked about, seeds, fertilizers, extension services, and markets. Also, uh, mill rice has also have made some gains. Also, in mill rice uh, volumes that we are producing for, for the country. We started from 2016, we have made a moderate gains by increasing from 30% to 55% by 2019. That is the main rice production in the country. Then lastly, we have also self-sufficiency 
and cassava production. All these are some of the gains that you have made as evidence through the implementation of planting for food and jobs. Now, lastly, I want to touch on the partnership of AGRA. Since we started the implementation of planting for food and jobs, uh, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture has partnered with AGRA. In the areas of one, they have provided technical assistance for us to come out of three strategic documents that is helping us to implement the program. Similarly, AGRA also has supported us in the evaluation of the program. The outcome of the evaluation, which was led by IFRI, I also have had to fine tune some of the issues that they raised in the evaluation exercise. Tally, AGRA has also supported us in supporting some of the certified growers in the provision of improved seeds. Notable ones are Sparks Limited, Volta City, and then the Red. They are also contributing to the provision of improved seeds, being maize, beans, rice, soya bean, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, I would say AGRA also partner with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. When we started uh, the planting for food and jobs, the largest recommendations were blanket. But through the partnership of AGRA, AGRA has supported Soil Research Institute and a consortium of scientists to formulate fertilizer, fertilizer recommendations that are all blended fertilizers that we have started giving to farmers since 2019 to 2020. So in a brief, I can say that the planting for food and jobs as well documented evidence and we are very grateful for the Honorable Minister and his team for introducing this important program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Koto, for very good, good points you've made on time as well. Uh, I would like just to invite uh, Mr. Siame. You've just spoken about uh, access to agriculture uh, extension services. Uh, it would be good to hear from you, um, Mr. Siame. Uh, you've received a grant from AGRA to recruit and train community-based advisors. Can you share key changes that you've seen as a result of this in intervention? And how do you see the future of the CBA's model in increasing farmers' access to extension? Over to you, CMA. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Theo. CMA, so sorry, you are muted. You are muted, we can't hear you. Sorry, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ngunga. I'll start from where my colleague left off. As he indicated, uh, extension is a key component of the planting for food and jobs campaign by the government, which was started in 2017. And providing seed fertilizer, key ingredients to farmers adopting the improved technologies. Uh, we have to also work on the human beings, the, the software to improve the dissemination of technology and subsequent adoption by farmers. So the government did not only stop with the seed and fertilizer, it went ahead and for the first time in many years, engaged 2,700 extension officers. This greatly improved the availability of extension officers and therefore enhanced extension outreach in the country. Uh, therefore, it came as a joy when we had the support from AGRA to also, I mean, to support us in the engagement, recruitment, as well as the training of uh, community-based advisors. An innovative approach to uh, extension service delivery, where they provide last mile extension uh, opportunity for communities that have challenge with access to the, our extension officer because of limited numbers. Even though I must admit government has really done well in the past three, I mean, four years, because we had a low number of 1,586 extension agents in the country then, but with the recruitment of 2,700, it came to boost highly, but uh, we needed more at the last mile level as uh, indicated by other speakers. So, we have been working with the community-based advisors. Uh, it has, where we, they are trained by our Minister of Food and Agriculture Extension Officers, plus other chain actors, uh, so that they will provide those uh, extension 
services to the smallholder farmers where we, we, we cannot uh, have enough extension offices today. We, we think it has really increased access to agricultural technical knowledge in the communities where we are currently piloting in 28 districts from five regions in the country. Uh, in some of the communities, we have one uh, community-based advisor uh, attending to 300 farmers and everything. If we can get more of such a, a cadre of a last mile extension agents, it will go a long way in enhancing smallholder farmers' access to uh, agricultural technical knowledge. Uh, we think this is the way to go so that uh, it will enable the public and private sector to have a large number of uh, extension offices to, to draw on for increasing uh, agricultural productivity. Uh, you know, through planting for food and job, earlier on, uh, during my regional uh, team, they made mention of some of the inroads they are making. The concept, the innovative concept is catching up with many of the, uh, the uh, areas we operate in. For example, when you go to Bono region, uh, we have four districts implementing, but four additional districts have shown desire and interest to implement it, and they have started something on their own. And we, we are looking forward to trying to build in the capacity of said districts and many more of said districts so that they, they can also hook on to the community-based advisor system, as is the case in Tanzania and Kenya, where there is a full-blown arrangement that you have this non-remunerative extension service providers complementing public uh, public sector extension service so that we have a, a, a good pluralistic agricultural extension service uh, provision in Ghana where all will be involved. Uh, additionally, uh, yeah, a few seconds, a few seconds to go. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, additionally, we are getting very good results, not only from neighboring districts trying to adopt the CBA concept, but we also have very good signs, like you heard from Jalu and the, the uh, other people from uh, some of the districts where they are really making, seeing business sense in providing rural and extension, uh, rural advisory and extension services to the farmers while they still link up for financial, uh, for business opportunities with large uh, input, agricultural input delays, and they, they are provided, they provide those, they serve as link for, between the farmers and this uh, large uh, input delays on commission basis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Siame. Just the way you just link extension services to some of the key achievements that the planting for food and ex, uh, planting and for jobs. food and jobs have achieved is extremely important. N now we go to Mr. Tumwasi Ankra. Uh, you lead the Directorate of Policy Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation, which is extremely very important. Uh, and we want just to hear from you. Uh, some of the key interventions your directorate has really collaborated with AGRA on and the impact it has had on what you've just, uh, your colleagues have just shared. For example, all these key actors we've had uh, being smallholder farmers, uh, private sector companies, they need a conducive policy environment. It would be good to hear from you, for example, the work you've done with AGRA on seed policy and regulations, uh, what you've been working on on FASPED, the African Union uh, Biennial Review, uh, and anything else you think is actually important um, to share with the audience that is well with us this evening. Over to you, Mr. Tumwasi. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Thierry, and uh, Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, Ghana. Um, uh, head of Af Afgra West Africa, the Agra team, um, directors of agriculture. Uh, I take this opportunity to highlight the support uh, we have received from Agra uh, as far as their support to uh, Ghana's agricultural transformation is concerned. First 
So for the ministry had a policy document which was about 10 years old, the food and agriculture sector development policy. And the AGRA discussed and we decided to have a situation where we can, because things have been changed, technologies are coming, innovations are coming, and challenges are being identified within that policy document. So AGRA, with the support of AGRA, we have reviewed this document, uh, the Food and Agriculture Sector Development Policy, since September 2019 to July 2020, we reviewed this document. First of all, we had a desk review uh, of various reports, the MOF annual reports, joint sector review reports, consultations with the RD, uh, regional uh, decentralized, sex, uh, uh, decentralized departments, and looked at how the implementation of the policy had gone and the areas that needs to be revised. So we, in the first phase, we did this desk review, and in the second phase, we have drafted uh, the successor policy. That's going to be the first step three. And it's in the last stage of, uh, of being finalized. Uh, we, we did the first drive, the second drive, and the validation workshop was uh, organized with the support of AGRA. And the final document will be approved very soon uh, to guide uh, implementation of uh, interventions that this government is implementing. So, so that is about the main policy document. That is the first step. And then we have also had the binary review reporting, which was also supported by AGRA. Uh, this report uh, um, is trying to track uh, the performance of Ghana as far as the CADEP uh, uh, commitments that was uh, declared at the Marabou were concerned. And uh, it enabled us to track uh, uh, this, uh, this, the way we are, we, are, we are going as far as the is concerned. So it helps us to track, monitor, and report on progress made with the implementation of the target that was set at Marabou to achieve a great growth and transformation uh, in the continent by 2025, as you have been there. So AGRA supported PME to collect the data to start with in 2019 round of reporting and supported the validation workshop that collected the that data. And then Ghana country report was prepared and sent to the AU, who is do, doing the actual uh, assessment. And uh, uh, we, I, I must say that uh, Ghana uh, was one of the four countries out of the 49 that, uh, that was adjusted to be on track as far as the commitments are concerned. Uh, I know the commitments are about uh, recommitment of the principles and values of the CADE process, and then enhancing investment finance in agriculture, particularly, and the ending hunger by 2025 and reduce poverty by half by 2025, and boosting intra-African trade uh, in 2025, and enhancing resilience in livelihoods and production of systems to climate vulnerability, variability, uh, and, and shocks, and strengthening a mutual accountability to actions and results. So that is, as far as the policy issues are concerned, that is the support that we have received from AGRA. Then we have the micro reforms for African agribusinesses, that MIRA, uh, we also received that support. This aim at improving the enabling agri policy and regulation environment to increase agri business investment into in policy and uh, input supply and output marketing in Ghana. Uh, how did we do that? We do. We went through identifying and prioritizing and reforming uh, program agri policies areas that we had challenges in implementing, and then laws and regulations and administrative practices that we thought that were not in support of the smallholder farmers who are all who are participating basically in the uh, flagship program the government is, uh, is implementing. I think Mr. Kutu has given how, how the PSJ is targeting uh, smallholder farmers. So, and uh, under the MIRA, we have, uh, MIRA, we have, had a ratification. Mr. Tomasi, you, you, Mr. Tomas, you have less than a minute just to finish, please. Ratification and gazetting of the harmonized ECOWAS seeds and fertilizer uh, regulations. And this for us is helping us because the Ghana seed sector was uh, was not that vibrant until we started this planting for food and jobs. And now uh, a, a greater percentage of seed that we get for our families are coming, are being produced locally. And I think that's one of the results that we've gotten from. Uh, the, the support that we got from Agra. 
and the uh, development of approval of electronic database for improving the efficiency of a laser subsidy. Also, the electronic system was, we also received support from AGRA, especially with the support uh, the registration of some farmers uh, 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 to get the data to guide uh, the implementation of the program. And then development of uh, an approval of policy and act agrees for introducing high quality, for, uh, uh, high quality flour, cassava flour, uh, as an inclusion of the bakeries that we have in the country. And then the communication of MARA reforms to uh, those that need the, on a website that everybody can assess and know the performance of the sector. So this is basically some of the, uh, uh, in fact, AGRA also supported the MAE system for the PFG and the two, I think Mr. Kutu mentioned two, ASA and then IFRI. We have the report which gives us areas that are gaps. We have gaps to improve on the project of uh, in the implementation of the uh, planting for food and jobs. So uh, at the policy front, that's how AGRA has supported us. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tumwasi Ankara. Uh, quite a lot has been achieved uh, in the crop directorate, as well as in the agriculture extension services. And from what you just said, a lot has really uh, achieved in the area of policy environment and m and &E framework to actually support the agenda the ministry has, has put forward. In the interest of time, uh, I would just invite Mr. Akoto, Mr. Siame, and Mr. Tumwasi, if that's okay, to drop your email address in the chat box so interested uh, uh, audience can actually get in touch. And from what I know, a lot of the information that has been shared is readily available on the MOFA website. So feel free to reach out and check that information. Uh, with that, I would just like to hand over to Agi. I know we are pressed uh, with time. Agi, if you are there, uh, please take it away. Thank you very much, uh, Thierry, for moderating that session. And thank you, our panelists, for really uh, delving deep into some of the achievements and successes and challenges that uh, this journey uh, we have experienced in this journey. Um, in the interest of time, we are running quite a bit late, and You're we do very have to our international meeting, the 20 minutes in tomorrow. Can you? Agi, on mute. Gosh, I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Thierry, for moderating that session. And thank you to our panelists for sharing those insightful uh, comments uh, in that panel. Um, as we close, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to welcome the Honorable Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Ausu Afiri Akoto, um, our dear president, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, who has now joined us on the call, um, to once again thank our country manager and his team, in West Africa, uh, Mr. Foster Boteng, and you know the directors uh, of Ministry of Food and Agriculture present, our development partners that have been led by uh, Amber Lili Kenny, who has uh, graciously uh, walked us through the CAC and what achievements we've had with that, our implementing partners who are on the call, ladies and gentlemen. At this moment, I will not waste much time. I would like to invite our president, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, to give us her remarks, after which she will invite our honorable minister to then give his remarks as well. Thank you and over to you, Dr. Kalibata. <clears throat> Thank you, Agi. And uh, it's really good to see you, to see all of you. And I apologize I've come in at the tail end of this conversation because I was in the food system summit, as you all know now. But it's really good to listen and hear what many of you were saying. So, Honorable Minister, I'm really, really glad to be here. And I want to start by congratulating you for being our minister again and being part of this journey again. We are very, <laughs> we are very excited. This is something that Thank you. Forward to. Yeah, and this is something that really, really means that all of Thank us you. are doing something right. Uh, your leadership has been amazing. I also want to appreciate the partners that have been working with you and, and with us in some cases. This is not a single man's journey. This is a journey that transforms 60% of a country in terms of population. It's not some, something anybody can do alone. So I wanted to appreciate the development partners that support the government of Ghana 
and support the farming communities that we work with. I also, of course, want to appreciate the partners we work with. Many of you have presented. This is, this, well, Agrich made a choice to not do the work, to work through the institution that live on the ground. You know, so, and we try to leave that. We try to make sure that we empower institutions, <clears throat> businesses, uh, NGOs, and, and really stay at arm's length and make sure that the work gets done, but don't try to do it ourselves because we know one day we'll walk away and we want to make sure when we do, you have the capacity that you need. So that's why we don't do things ourselves, work through other institutions uh, to ensure that they are, they are all empowered. I also want to thank the Ghana team and the staff that has been working with you all for the amount of work they've done. We set out as Agra with a very ambitious uh, target. We, we want 10 million people directly with extension, with ways of accessing inputs that are different than we had been seeing before and across 11 countries. And we've seen, we've reached about 10 million people. Now, the, the results in those countries differ, but I have to say that in Ghana, we've got amazing results based on the fact that our work is combined with the work that the government was doing itself. We didn't try to do things that are separate from what the government is doing. We tried to reinforce the government's own work, whether it's what we did with the ministry or whether what we did with the private sector. I'm sure, Honorable Minister, you're surprised that just how much happens outside your ministry in terms of <laughs> some of other things that we found in government in, in your in your government. Yeah, but it's recognizing, it's recognizing that the ecosystem that is necessary for the agricultural sector to work is everywhere. It's in the institutions of la higher learning, it is in, in science, science places, uh, labs, and it is in private sector. And, and to support you is to also move this whole ecosystem along, along with, with what you're doing. So that's what we've been trying to do. Now we hope that the policies we've been working on uh, we go further, you know, go further in the sense that they may, they open up so much space. So that's why when we talk about indirect reach, we talk about our ambition of reaching 21 million farmers indirectly, because when you have policies that work, definitely millions of farmers get reached. And we are very happy to say that we are on target with that goal. We are at a stage which is extremely important and interesting and where we would like to take counsel from you. We are finishing our, our 20, our 20, 21 strategy, which ends in 2021, and we are pivoting to a new strategy. We've been on this journey with you. In fact, Ghana has been a defining factor for us. We've been learning with you. So as we, we move into the 2030 strategy, and I, for me, I call it the push to 2030, the end to hunger. Africa needs to end hunger now. We can't continue talking about hunger forever. That push to 2030, it's something we'd like to learn from you all and to understand how we can work better together to be able to deliver together. We do have, we've learned a, a, a number of things have happened since we started this journey. We now have the Food Systems Summit that is in place that we must take advantage of. The people recognize that we are behind on a number of things, on hunger, on poverty, on, but also climate change is an issue since we started this work. And, and recognizing that that context and, and that complexity is going to be very important uh, to, to, to how we drive for hunger and reducing poverty. And I just want to encourage you to take advantage of every opportunity the Food System Summit offers because it's bringing so many people together to have conversations around what is possible. As an institution, I just want to, to conclude on maybe one thing that I find interesting. Like I said, Honorable Minister, we work with partners like the like government, we work with partners like private sector that we've been talking to. A lot of people have been trying to undermine the work that we do. I wouldn't, I, it wouldn't be right for me not to say that, but I keep telling people that they are not undermining Agra, they're undermining our partners because Agra doesn't implement out there. They are trying to undermine our partners as well. So I think it would be good just to really um, be able to say and, and, and drown that with the, the good work that you all are doing and be able to show and be able to talk about what you do. Don't use, don't, don't think that I'm trying to tell you that don't hold us accountable. No, hold us accountable. Where you see that we are not doing things right, please hold us accountable. But also let's say no to anybody trying to define who we are. And that's basically, that's what I'm saying. 
who we are is we are trying very hard to deliver for our people. Who we are is we are doing a good job through the partnership we have with you. And I just don't, don't think we should allow other people to define that for us. Uh, we should hold ourselves accountable and we should be able to deliver for our people. We live this challenge every day. So people coming and telling us that these things are not working is not something that I necessarily uh, agree with. So I'll stop there and um, ask, do what Agi has asked me to do, but really again, recognize that the energy you have brought into this institution and to this sector, the, the sacrifice, the personal sacrifice on time that you have put in to be able to get things where they are, the, 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 the elevation you have put for the sector in terms of the government itself, but also, uh, you know, everything that, that smallholder farmers represent in your country, we appreciate it because this would not have happened without the personal effort you've put in. So over to you, Honorable Minister, and again, good to see you again and good to be working with you. Um, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. It's always a pleasure meeting with you, virtual or physical. And I know that the big responsibility that the United Nations has given you in coordinating this great idea of the food systems is going well, and I wish you all the best uh, for the coming months. Uh, I'm supposed to be uh, doing a wrap up on our policy issues here in Ghana. And uh, first of all, let me greet you, the President of Agra, Madam Agnes Kalibata again, the West Africa Regional Head, Mr. Foster Boateng, who has so ably represented you here in Ghana, in, in the region, uh, development partner, directors of MOFA, ladies and gentlemen. In 2017, when I had just been appointed Minister for Food and Agriculture, one of the first visitors I received was no less a figure than Dr. Agnes ba Kalibata. He paid a, a courtesy call on me and engaged me uh, with other stakeholders to secure their buy-in for the government's vision of modernizing the agriculture sector in Ghana. We solicited for both technical and financial assistance of our development partners to roll out the government's flagship campaign of planting for food and jobs. It is sad to say our planting for food and jobs campaign initially did not resonate well with most of our development partners. I dare say they were doubting Thomas's. The government's agricultural transformation agenda which is reflected in the National Agricultural Investment Plan, branded investment for food and jobs, with the planting for food and jobs campaign flagship, driving five strategic modules all geared towards enhancing food security, job creation, improved incomes for the farmers, and a general improvement in the economy. These modules are the food security module that's to increase the productivity of smallholder farmers, the production of selected food crops and vegetables. The second one is the planting for export and rural development, a strategic module for tree crop development. The third, rearing for food and jobs, a module to enhance the livestock sub sector. The fourth, greenhouse vegetable production, and then the mechanization of farm services, especially on smallholder agriculture. Now let's see the kind of support that AGRA has given to this ministry in the past four years. One is in preparing the plan for PFJ. It was during these very difficult times when we had doubted Thomas's amongst the uh, investment community, the uh, development partners. When AGRA came along under the leadership of Dr. Kalibata, the president of AGRA, to provide technical assistance to the ministry to develop a five-year strategic plan for planting for food and jobs. The strategic module for food security consists of the four investment buckets, seed as improved seed, application of fertilizer, extension services to the smallholders, markets, 
and e-agriculture. For us, Agra was the only partner who understood our vision, what it takes and how to actualize the vision. During the plan preparation process, Agra consulted with the relevant stakeholders, including development partners, civil society organizations, the private sector and other relevant GOG MDAs. And in this respect, I must mention the contribution that Mr. Foster Boateng made in this effort in trying to link us up with these stakeholders. The plan was further validated by the agriculture sector working group for buying. It was after the plan has been, had been developed and accepted by the agriculture sector working group that partners like USAID committed to engage a technical assistant to develop the MAE framework for results tracking. Other partners, including Global Affairs Canada, the African Development Bank, the World Bank, aligned their programs resources to support selected pillars of the PFJ. In the implementation, Agra through its country strategy for Ghana aligned its program resources to invest in seed, fertilizer, and, mar and market pillars of the PFJ. Now, policy and regulation. On the policy and re regulation front, I'm aware of Agra support to MOFA in the following areas. Seed Regulation, Plant Variety Protection Act, Aflatoxin Regulation and Control, Development of Ghana Agricultural Insurance Policy, and Amendment of Act for Incorporation of Agricultural Insurance, the National Insurance Act of 2020. Third Generation of Food and Agriculture Sector Development Policy, FADEP 3, and finally, data collection and analytic capacity for the AU CADAP biennial scorecard for mutual accountability. Convening platform for mobilizing agricultural investment. Partnered the government of Ghana to host the 2019 Africa Green Revolution Forum that brought together over 2,500 delegates in the agricultural ecosystem to deliberate on support to the sector. Flagship design support is a fifth item in terms of the support that the government of Ghana received from Agra, provided technical assistance to develop strategic plans for the following flagships. Planting for export and rural development, now the Tree Crop Development Authority, rearing for food and jobs, the livestock module of PFJ, in the Ghana Fertilizer Expansion Program. What changes are we seeing in Ghana through our partnership with Agra? A, use of certified seeds by smallholder farmers has increased from 11% in 2016 to 43% in 2020 among PFJ beneficiaries. B, yield increases. PFJ has within four years facilitated the access of 2 million farmers to improve seeds, fertilizers, extension services, and markets. Key results include, but not limited to increasing yield of rice and maize from 2.8 metric tons per hectare in 2016 to four metric tons per hectare in 2020. That's for rice. And for maize, 1.8 metric tons per hectare in 2016 to 3.5 metric tons in 2020. We're hoping that we'll increase this to five, six metric tons per hectare in the next couple of years. Production volume increased from 1.9 million metric tons in 2017 to 4 million metric tons in 2020 for cereal, making Ghana now self-sufficient in maize production. Locally milled rice increased from just below half a million metric tons in 2017 to 665,000 metric tons in 2020. National consumption is estimated at 1.3 million metric tons, placing Ghana at 55% self-sufficiency in rise from 30% in 2017. Our expectation is to become fully self-sufficient by 2023. D, quantum leap 
in agricultural growth and public expenditure. Public expenditure in agriculture increased from 6.5% in 2016 of government budget to 10.32 in 2018 and growing the sector from 3.5% in 2016 to 6.6% in 2019. We are on course, of course, to get to double digit growth in agriculture in the next few years. E, Ghana improves its agricultural, African Agricultural Transformation Scorecard, AATS, from 3.9 in 2017 to 6.67 in 2019. In 2019, Ghana was among the only four countries in Africa, including Rwanda, Morocco, and Mali, that were on track for implementing the CADAP Malabo Declaration. We owe this achievement partly to AGRA for the technical assistance to strengthen the ministry's uh, MAE capacity. Then finally, Global Food Security Index. The, Econ the Economic Intelligence Unit, EIU, in this 2019 Global Food Security Index, ran Ghana fourth on the continent of Africa. Now, going forward, what does it mean for our partnership with Agra? There are four, five items that I will mention. Three crop development, of, uh, development. The government would work with Agra to mobilize both technical and financial resources to strengthen the capacity of the Tree Crop Development Authority, mandated to develop and regulate the seven tree crops, cashew, mango, shea, coconut, oil palm, rubber, and coffee crops in Ghana. These tree crops have the potential to generate for Ghana foreign exchange and of anything around $16 billion per year over the, uh, 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 from the next seven, eight years onwards. Madam President, thank you for releasing Mr. Foster, the Agra West, West Regional, West Africa Regional Head to us to support the Tree Crop Development Authority. B, support for, to develop the poultry value chain to attract investments, to expand the poultry feed industry in Ghana, to all take soya and maize produced by our smallholder farms. D, digital technologies for agricultural development. Focus on farmer data, farm data, transaction data, extension content, payments, communication, et cetera, for enhanced input uh, uh, e-commerce, mobile advisory and digital finance. And finally, Resilience and climate change initiatives uh, deploy in, you know, innovative financial products for agriculture, apply and adopt climate smart technology to foster resilience of supported value chains against climate shocks and strategic food reserve for emergency preparedness. In conclusion, Madam President, the government of Ghana is grateful to Agra and its partners that is Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation the Rockefeller Foundation, USAID, BMZ, and FCDO, former DFID. I look forward to another fruitful phase of your agricultural transformation journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister, for those very, very incisive and articulative words of wisdom. Uh, but most importantly, thank you for supporting Agra. Thank you for having the passion to indeed transform agriculture in Ghana. Ghana continues to become an example or a frontier country in Africa that has committed to the sector. So as we come to a tail end, it is not wise for me to speak after our leadership has spoken, but allow me uh, to break protocol for once to just quickly summarize the things that have come out of this webinar, uh, but firstly to thank our panels, our moderators for an excellent job done this afternoon, and also for our audience that has been patiently engaged since we began with lots of comments that have come through the chat. But unfortunately due to time, we will not be speaking to most of them. I have summarized them as follows. Most of the audience have concurred with us and with you, Mr. Minister and Madam President, 
that we need functional ecosystems, that we need capable partners that have good skin in the game. And I think today we did hear from a couple of those partners and had the skin they have put in the game, but most importantly, the ambition and the hunger they have to actually deliver on the push to 2030 that our president has spoken to. But also importantly, to focus on scalable tested models that our partners and most of our panels have actually been speaking to today. So we do have the models, they have been tested in the last five years and more. What now needs to be done is to scale them. So the challenge to you, uh, Honorable Minister, is how do we scale these beyond the geographies in which AGRA has been participating, but also how do we scale these to other countries? Because the problem of hunger is not unique to Ghana, it is unique to the continent and to the world. And the local solutions are the, so, uh, are the way that we are going to make this happen. But I also had some voices that are not happy, and I think it is prudent that we hear them, and very specific to Sebastian's Alessand's challenge, that we should stop start moving away from handouts to begin to innovate locally and find local solutions. Sebastian, we have heard you. We agree with you. How do we do this? And you know, we want to pass back the challenge that you should lead in this and work with us and all other ecosystem actors on how do we move from handouts to really sustainable solutions, which again speaks to uh, the sustainability agenda that we've been speaking to. But also Abdul Hakim comes and challenges us to not to politicize the journey of transformation. Again, Abdul, your voice has been heard. Again, how do you separate politics from economy and from ensuring that we put food on, on place and families of our households. I think it's not an either or, but again, we have had the comments and we will continue to have these conversations. This is just a start, but the push to 2030 is real and Madam President, your challenge is accepted. I will speak on behalf of the audience here tonight that the challenge is accepted. Let us continue to work together, a luta continua. Thank you very much and allow me to close this webinar by once again thanking all of you, but most importantly, the Honorable Minister and our President for taking time to attend this webinar. Thank you, God bless, stay safe. Thank you very much.